Unsee the future. Welcome to Unsee the Future, the Hopi Chatty Bits, the podcast in which I, Timo Peach, meet artists, solar punks, and changemakers reimagining the stories we think we're in. And we've come to the end of our first series. Uh, what a ride. What have I learned from it so far? Well, I'm going to cogitate that and try and piece something together. What amazing guests I've had already. Each of them giving me, I feel, a different fragment on the idea of storytelling in a time of crisis and how we reimagine that narrative we feel trapped in and don't even think about. Feels very much like a beginning to me. How's it been for you? Have you got some nuggets and some interesting points out of it for yourself? Let me know. Get in touch. But today, as a last episode, I've got uh, a guest that's particularly special to me and I always had in mind to wrap things up with... uh, because uh, she's a very dear art mate of mine, full disclosure. So who is my guest in episode 10? My guest today is a visionary artist, writer and mentor of sacred women's wisdom. A performer, illustrator and storyteller, she sees her life and art as a passionate process of creating and recreating, surrendering to the cycles of life. First visual artist in residence of Lighthouse Pool Centre for the Arts in Dorset, much of her work has been site-specific and collaborative, using outside and inside spaces to bring people together, exploring inner landscapes of meaning. All of it, she says, an invitation for people to explore deeper truths of themselves. She says, when we connect into our innate source of inspiration, we tune into the universe. It is, she adds, a web of infinite expression. She sees the role of the artist not simply as testifier or interpreter, but in many ways as priestess, even alchemist, facilitating women especially to access their own innate creative intelligence and confidence. My deepest desire is for the expression I share to spark inspiration in you, she says. Your story matters. Your life is your own masterpiece. Now, a key work she's been exploring for over 10 years is a narrative interpreting a deeply personal journey, the monochronium. And it is this project that brought us together, a collaboration that is celebrating 10 years of co-creation, playful production, storytelling experimentation, and brazenly celebrating each other's unadulterated genius. She is my dear art mate, the one and only Hazel Evans. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. <laughs> now, we thought we'd do this episode a bit differently because, well, look where we are. We, we're in we're in the incredible Orange Walled studio, place of creation. This is where it all happens. This is where it all happens. Many, happened. many, many hours of, um, yeah, just... How would you describe spilling, it? Spilling out <laughs> from the source of creation. Yeah, it's... Expressions of, um, yeah art and words and life and just purging it out right so much has purged and spilled all over this modest (laughs) shed floor here today you're right and so we thought it might be rather good to have a a little special intro on the video here being in the space together cooped up in this same shot exactly because we've been cooped up in here so much over the years Mm, 10 years man i know i know and how many we haven't even actually counted the amount of projects we've done together but no. like, I guess that the, the the one that is really celebratory the one that began our journey together and the one that we are taking to another level right now is a, of course the monochronium the monochronium now uh, dear viewer listener do you know what that is uh, you may well do you may not at all we're going to introduce you to it a little bit here it's 
been very special to me. I will say up front, as I think I do in the entire podcast, um, it, it's produced some of my own favourite work. You've been very open and generous in letting me in as a collaborator, which you do. You let people in very generously to your work. Yeah, well, I mean, like we say in, in the um, other part of the podcast, you know, it was like, can you can I record some of my poetry? You were like, yeah, great. Six weeks later, like literally probably like, I don't know, most of the days of six weeks we spent in here and we had, you know, this thing, this whole landscape, this whole sonic landscape that was um, putting um, an audio interpretation into those parts of the inner workings, the inner landscapes and the pictures and everything that was coming out and the performances. And we made, in fact, look on, let's, let's put it into this shot as well. It's sitting right here, this sacred artifact. Yeah. Now we, sh we show it elsewhere, but there it is, Adventures into the Monochromium, if I can not catch the light, physical... That's the first album. <laughs> that is the first album we did yeah. together. Six weeks before this existed, we we didn't know each other very well. No, exactly, and it made a really it really made the perfect um, sonic landscape for my exhibition. It was just incredible to have such a richness of audio to have been birthed out in that. And like you said in the amazing introduction, thank you very much. Was um um how personal this this work is mm. and and this is why it's still alive today because the it's not you know i've created we created one piece and then it was finished it's like it's actually opened up a whole journey for the last 10 years it really has and i love the story of you exploring it mm. and and you're going to put more and more of that onto your website the the iterative way that you've looked at it now we talk about this on the main podcast this time round, uh, we are sharing this as a, a special little video insight. You and me here mucking about in the studio. Yeah, because it's such an important place and such an incredible place of our journey. Mm. And so, actually, this um, I suppose this this podcast and it's celebrating the the end of your first series of your, these podcasts. It is as well as celebrating our ten years of working together. And it is about the creative process. It is, so, which involves a lot of sitting out there in our little garden around around a campfire while you tell us stories of the monochromium and we yeah. all go wow uh, and a lot of kind of making salads in there in our little house uh, yes you've been part of the family here when you've come around to do art and we felt like each other's family while making this mm -hmm. it's been a lovely playful relationship over 10 years hasn't it yeah nice and simple yeah. for us to just get together get into a flow that we found yeah in each other's worlds uh, and we've been coming back to that flow lately uh, which we will get to in a sec now I would point out uh, as you watch Unsee the Future the Hopi Chatty Bits with me Timo Peach uh, the whole interview of us talking and really getting into your work and where that's come from and, mm -hmm. and, and a little bit more about this project you can hear that on the podcast search for Unsee the Future on your favourite podcast app as an audio experience. We go to a special space, don't we, to record that? Yes, yeah. We where do go we go? To, we go to Lighthouse, Paul, the Centre of Arts, which is to be. which is where um, they invited me to be artist in residence for five years, and this is where the work was born. Mm. This was the the, um, the the venue in which this place, was, this, this project was born and given the opportunity to be born which was incredible and really allowing the interpretation of a life to become into art. And this mm. is, you know, what I also talk about, how the process of creation facilitates life itself. The process of art facilitates life itself, yes. And that's why I wanted to talk to you in this last episode, because you're such an artist of inner landscapes, but you've you, as I say in the interview, you've given me the word art with confidence. Meeting mm -hmm. you 10 years ago, like you more or less handed me that word. You need the word art mm -hmm. in what you do with confidence. And of course, it's become central to unsee the future and writing a whole book. So, you know, like I say in the interview, <laughs> thanks, mate. That's You're quite welcome. it's quite handy. I'm, quite, I'm quite pleased you strolled in here and went, can I do a bit of poetry? Art really does save lives. Art saves lives. Yes. You heard it here. <laughs> now, I think uh, we should announce... We're going to share with you here in a minute, we're going to share some selections from our chat in the Sherling studio at Lighthouse so you can get a flavour of where we were and what we were doing. Um, but I, it, I, surely we've got to announce 
that we have also been reopening that flow just gently right here in the studio mm. right here today uh can you announce what the project is yes it's the monochronium prophecy this is the next level of this body of work which has really turned into my life work <laughs> yeah smash cut to a little teaser trailer for the monochronium prophecy Imagine that place where only you have been. You may have tried to bring others there, but it was simply not possible. Or is it? Well, that looks good, <laughs> doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah, it's really. What is it? It's really to inspire others into creation. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody has to be an artist mm -hmm. or a writer or a musician or a performer, but it's the act of creation. Because when you're in the act of creation, you can create a different reality for yourself, and that it can be anything, anything at all. And this is what this is about: is realizing that we take responsibility for the artistry of our own lives and we can move that into an expression of creation. So that's what, this is essentially like the prophecy. This is what, this this, is what it's about. Take responsibility for the artistry of our own lives. <laughs> write, write that down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. blimey. Um, and it is a kind of, it's an invitation to a meditation really, this piece, isn't it? Whilst being a reinterpretation, a re-celebration of most of the pieces from the original album it's yeah. a slight reflow of them there's one or two missing you'll see in the full podcast we explain some of those that are not in this interpretation but have not gone away uh, but this flow is an interesting one with some additional new pieces and it is like it's a lie down and close your eyes and listen to this and it will take you on a journey man it will yeah this is the um, invitation to um experience the playfulness that accessing of the universal wisdom when we relax and we come into play but then going deeper and it's it's meditative but it's also journey work so mm. it's it's uh, evocative and it's you know it's to, to sort of, you know pull those emotions out of you um to create you know inspire transformation within yourself mm. and so as we were piecing it together it was incredible to realise, wow, actually over the last 10 years, parts of this have come true in my life. <laughs> and this is where it's like, what is this? What is this new piece we're creating? Wow, I've actually written what was happening and what has come true into my life, even though it's told through metaphor and story and everything, you know, this is how artists work, right? You know, this it is how is. we do it. So, um, so this, this incredible process actually showed me and us once again the art shows us what it is yeah. what it rather than us trying to dictate the art so i think that's what's so incredible about working with you on this it, yeah i mean I, i'm just tagging along making jokes and tea in many ways <laughs> Uh, uh which which it surprises you enormously dear viewer listener i can tell um but the, it's fair to say it might look to some people like we're mucking about and the lovely first lady of momo comes home from work when she was working away and would always say i never know what i'm going to find you two up to but she, she wouldn't turn her hair she'd go all right yeah no that obviously that can two can two creatives have that much fun playing together stop it and stop it now it's not fair it's not right and making art and like really is it possible but that's the thing is that when we unlock and we pl you know we play together in such a way the the synergy and the alchemy unlocks other levels of creativity and i guess yeah. that's you know when you meet somebody such as your amazing self you know that we can unlock that creativity together indeed we do unlock it yeah. we unlock something uh, it, mainly we unlock things by saying oh, have you have you spotted that that's genius 
Yeah. Yes, I did. And have you spotted that what you did is also yeah. genius? And that forms yeah. the basis of how we work. Well, you see, confidence is key, isn't it? It is, though. <laughs> boss your magnificence is what yeah. you're always saying. We're trying to help each other yeah. boss at each other's magnificence. And um, why, why not, quite frankly? Why would you not do anyway? <laughs> so. Why would you not? Yeah. I agree. We probably do need a third person who's quite circumspect to go, right, you two jokers, calm down. This might need more editing. Uh, but we don't we don't bother finding that third person. We're just too busy having fun. So uh, yeah, the Monocaronian prophecy is out. Uh, links are below. Go and find it on Hazel's Bandcamp page and uh, get a good pair of headphones and go for a long walk or lie down and listen to it. And it, it is some of my favourite pieces of music are on there. And the reinterpretation you put into it feels like we've made this little pile of stones together at this point on the way journey. We're both in quite a sort of creatively tired space but it feels like a an intersection between 10 years of stuff spiraling around yeah but also projecting forward because yeah. we have plans for the monochromium and if the universe unfolds as it should then they're very exciting plans for the future mm. but at this point this yeah. is just a a take on it like all the others that yeah you've, exactly you've done. and um and yeah, to in, to inspire others to open up to an incredible journey. Yeah, that's the point of your work, it, isn't it? It has been an incredible journey. Mm. <laughs> so it, yeah, um, it has. That it's, yeah. so I urge you to go find the full audio listen of our interview in the Sherling Studio. It was a lovely chat where we really look at the origins of the monochromium and your work and how you came to this and why you do it and why I think talking to you was a sort of vital last episode on this first mm, series of the Hope Chatty Bits. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Mate, good work. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, should we try a high five? Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hazel Evans, thank you for being my guest on oh. Unsee the Future of the Hope Chatting Bits. You are so welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hazel Evans. Hazel Evans! <laughs> the face of the future, Hazel Evans! And I am, of course, here in casual everyday wear with Hazel Evans. alive and it feeds on art. Wait, what did we come in for? How's the standing going, Hazel?
Five songs to Elvis Unsee the Future. It's yeah. happened. We're now on the other side of it. Yeah, we're on the other side. <sighs> on the dark side of the moon. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? What did we do again? We, we <laughs> <laughs> I love <Well>. the silence. <laughs> Sips the red bush tea. Well. <laughs> I think that's a wrap. Here we are. Hello. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Unsee the Future, the Hopi Chatty Bits. Mm. It's about time. Yeah, well, it is about time, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, Thank you for having me. Well, it's so indeed. brilliant to be here with you. You are the perfect guest for me for the last episode of this first series, looking at storytelling. Because of the nature mm. of your work and how you tell stories and the, and the sort of themes that you explore, we'll get to that. Yeah. We are here in the Sherling studio in Lighthouse Pool. There's some memories in this building, aren't there? There are very, very many memories of this building and in the various different avenues and theatres and parts of it. So it's, it's incredible to be back here today, actually, after such a long um, journey in this last 10 years. Yes, and we'll get to some of that as well. I would say it's been a lovely warm welcome from Els Elspeth and everybody here. As soon as I said Hazel Evans, they went... Red carpet. <laughs> um, it's been lovely to have a warm welcome, yeah. Now, I normally ask my guests where in the world you are. We are in Poole, but, but how else would you answer that question? Where in the world are you, Hazel? Where in the world am I? Well, you know, I could be anywhere. <laughs> but um, right now, I'm in a big place of change in my life, coming back into uh, yeah, recreating lots of different things in my life on many different levels. And that's why it's great to be back here with you. It is great to be back. Starting at the beginning, I would say the very first question is, everybody thinks of you as an artist. You'll use that word a lot. There are many different ways of describing the kinds of work you've done and the practices that you pull together. What does the word art or artist even mean to you? Mm, good question. This really, to me, is... Um being a creator, because art can, obviously we can think, oh, it's painting or it's sculpture or it's performance or it's singing, we can put it to a method. But art to me really is about creation and it is about channeling that which is inside and bringing it outside into expression. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what expression that is. And that to me is art. But I think of one particular art practice with you I think of a few key practices of art that help us think creatively, but a, but a key one I think of with you is embodiment. That you put your face, your voice, your physicality into the marks and the words that you create. Did, does that ring true for you? And if so, what's, what's the importance of embodiment in your work? Why are you so present, obviously, in what you do? Well, I think um, I have always... Um got my art and my creation and my themes from within. So that is a natural sense of embodiment and traveling through experiences and um, feelings and emotions and bringing that out. So embodiment is absolutely important to me. And as I've been developing my art journey, it's not just about a process of discovering what's on the outside world, but it's been a simultaneous process of discovering how that outside world affects the inside world. Mm. And it's like this 
symbiotic synergy between working with the outside world, the, the expression, but also what I receive from the outside world and experience, letting that come in and then going back out towards expression. Mm. So it's this symbiotic um, pulsation of <laughs> movement yeah. that is embodiment. So it's not, so the art becomes um, an extension of myself, I suppose. And that's where storytelling and sound and pictures, and it could be any expression, um, is fundamentally important to me because it needs to come out. Yeah. <laughs> it just needs to come out. Well, it does need to come out, and that shows that you are as much a performer naturally as anything else. So it's, I guess it's a natural part of who we are as artists, whether we are what I'd call creative chameleons or... What's the, I don't know what the alternative word is, actually, all these years of talking about it, but some of us are just can't help but be obvious in our marks. I'm especially that way. I have to turn up, whether it's music, whether it's design or, or speaking. My voice is always very clear. It's just the way I have to do it. You're a little bit more of a chameleon, but we've always related in that way, haven't we? That We both have to turn up and be quite obvious in it, mm -hmm. and that's fine too. Yeah, and I think the, the core thread is the storytelling. Mm. And when we go back deeper into um, yeah, our innate wisdom and who we were like many eons and generations ago, how important messages were given to each other is through okay. storytelling yeah. and that in itself is an art and it's also the art of storytelling depending on you know, how well you can get the message across. So everything is storytelling and I suppose that is the, that's the one thread. And there is something quite primal about that um, cl clunky word, but beginnings, um, centuries before history, that exactly what you're saying, we'd have communicated in very physical ways with the landscape. Some of your work's been very physical in the outside. I'm thinking of a piece like um, Woodland Springs, mm -hmm. uh, where you got me dangling microphones down wells, you were climbing trees. Uh, wonderful exterior experiences, very to do with landscape and something ancient about your work. But the reason I wanted to talk to you, one of the one of the key themes is because when I think of your storytelling, it's about inner landscapes, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that is that is absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> and you laugh because it really is you you embody what it means as an artist to put it all out there. Mm. Uh, a quote. A quote you won't know what from yet, but we're going to reveal it, it that I found quite powerful is, what would you say if I told you this whole story was true? Mm, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. We're going to get to that. But that's it, isn't it? You, it? This is coming from something real within, but a story of an inner landscape, a lot of your work. Um, I think pretty much all of my work <laughs> is like that because um, I have to do what's true. I have to do what is fundamentally connected to truth and that means to the heart and that means the purity of expression and I can't, I can't do it any other way because otherwise I know I'm just faking it <laughs> for yeah, yeah. whatever outside reason and somehow I can't do it like that. So um, the embodiment and the art and that melding together is, um, yeah, it, it, it's authenticity, isn't it? It's mm. being, and it's being an artist in your life. It's your life being the art as well. And it's like walking back in here 10 years later and I'm like, wow, it's some incredible time loop where I'm coming back again and we're revisiting the work, which we'll probably talk about later as well. And it's, it's also, I had to sit down for a moment and realize, wow, you know, this place has supported me incredibly and the work that came out of it was actually um, a purge from a, um, a traumatic life situation mm -hmm. in the first time. And they, they supported me here in that development of that work and all of that work and the music and the collaborations and the installations and everything that came out of it was part of that purging of understanding what is happening inside. Mm -hmm. And when we allow the creative energy just to flow through and to connect to our emotions without thinking, oh, I need to make this picture look nice, I need to make this sound right, mm -hmm. like just letting it purge out. This is the creative process that I was facilitated in being here. And this is why it so touches me so 
greatly to come back here again. Hazel Evans, mate, I love you and your work. Thank love you, you for everything. Yeah. We'll go off and have coffee, big each other up. <laughs> yeah. Hazel, thank you for being on Unsee the Future, the Hobie Chatty Bits. You are so welcome. And it's been such an incredible journey and pleasure to work with you these last 10 years. <laughs> Let's open up the space to a new reality to create, huh? Let's open up the space to a new reality to create. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Unsee the future. So there we are, the delightful Hazel Evans. What an art mate she is. And I can't emphasise enough, really, how much she brought an extra piece into my work. And interestingly, that the, the, the flavours and tone of what we both do, you'd think it would be quite different, especially because I, I tend to muck about quite irreverently. Uh, but somehow it works and we've made some lovely stuff. And I do urge you to go and find the Monochronium Prophecy. Uh, it's the uh, first time that our work from the Monochronium, 10 years ago is out properly on a sort of digital download, remastered, new, new interpretations in there. It's um, some of my favourite work. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this first series of uh, Answer the Future, the Hopi Chatty Bits. Um, and I really urge you to go and find Hazel and her work. HazelEvans.co.uk, I think will take you through to where she is. Loads of good stuff in there. And when you see all the images of, of just how she embodies art, <laughs> it's inspiring and uh, she is a gosh darn star and everybody who knows her thinks so and I've really enjoyed working with her how'd that sound? <laughs> was that Thanks, any good? mate, you're amazing good, great uh, <laughs> so that that was alright, we'll leave that in <laughs> no, we can edit this out, it's fine just uh, give, yeah. slip me any other notes of... Um, <laughs> continue bossing your magnificence all Fine. the way. Fine, great. If you want to just uh, add some flavour in the background while we will I... continue creating <laughs> until the universe expands beyond anything we've ever known before. Let yes. that be known. <laughs> Let that be known. You can find all the foundational episodes of Unsee the Future's idiosyncratic style of research exploring the big themes of our era of crisis along with all the previous Hopi Chatty Bits at, say it with me, unseethefuture.com the There you can also find exclusive previews of the new book from my findings UTF how to think like an artist and change the world right on right on right yeah. it's pretty much exactly what you were saying I say I'm bang on my own brand uh, nine practices of art that can help you reimagine the story you think you're in whether you think you're arty blighter or not and you can encourage me by becoming a Momo Amigo and joining the Unsee the Future mailers and you can find out all about me as a music artist at momotempo.co.uk what story do you think you are in and are you figuring out yet how to change it let's encourage the more hopeful human tomorrow ciao for now ciao amigos ciao amigos that's Italian and Spanish <laughs> doesn't matter you're multilingual you can get away with that yeah I can do that yeah bye for now art <laughs> <laughs>